Hi everybody! Welcome to another fun-filled episode of Table 13, brought to you by Rational Radio and the Board Gods. I am a wooden leg, above me is Mr. E, and on the other side of me is I'm Mr. Shirley Shady. Temple. Or Shirley Ooh. Temple, as we like to call him. It's it's because shaved all... off the lovely curls, unfortunately. Yes, yeah, yeah. They're growing back. Um, it's a process. <laughs> it's it's because if you stab him, a pink bubbly liquid comes out. I don't. <laughs> it does though. It really does. Crickets. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in like the wind pot. No, see, that's way see, too. Oh, oh man, gross. God, see? why'd you have to go there? Like I was you, talking about you, like Kool Aid Man levels. Of course. But, like, okay. But that right, it was like a cute. It was like a, a cutesy like. Uh, really wants a chocolate yeah, yeah exactly. real talk jokes it's... about stabbings <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. is true yeah jeez uh, anyway today we are oh, talking man, on that note speaking of combat speaking yeah. of stabbings <laughs> today we're talking about combat uh, something that is pretty important in 5e D&D and in other role playing systems as well uh, and it's also very hard to keep it interesting or fresh or do things that aren't just you know, uh, roll dice, you hit him, and the next person. Uh, because that can get pretty boring. I think we've all been in a combat session where it just kind of feels like a, uh, a, a, a you know, ticker tape, where you're just like, okay, uh, next, what are you doing? All right, uh, that Every hits. combat scenario, yeah. it's every single one of them. There's, well, I mean, I mean, come on. You've had you run into You run into some, you run into some that are less of that. But that's yeah. that's what we're here to do. Yes. To, to yeah, try and impart tips. some level of knowledge, some inkling. Yeah. On what makes those combat sessions good and what makes the bad combat sessions bad. So jumping off from that, um, we'll we'll go with starting off the easy stuff. What makes combat sessions bad? Like in, in your minds, what are some combat session pitfalls that DMs commonly run into that make combat a drag? I think I think Dark Soulsing your your enemies, your bosses, your important NPCs that are you know combatants, um, giving them six billion H HP and just you know giving them more health bars, you know Kingdom Hearts, a lot Kingdom Hearts, um, it you know it's it's something where Absolutely. there should it should be more volatile than that. It, yeah. It's you know when you run into a combat and it's like he does. You yeah. know, X amount of damage, and then you run up and you hit him, and you hit yeah. him, and you hit him, and then you hit him, and you hit him, and you hit him. I think and then that six hours later, the he dies. It's it's really just it's boring. Yeah. You know, you could have illustrated that in a few sentences, right? right. And yeah, mystery. What do you get? I it's a lot of the same. I would say um, the big things that you want to avoid is the same things over and over again. Every once in a while, a big whack of enemies or a big whack of HP against your players is okay. Uh, but if that's what every single combat encounter is, uh, is just okay. Let's it's a race to see who can drop the other to zero HP first. Uh, it you draw your players away from. Uh, you know, the immersion of the game, I think, which is a goal for a lot of people. I think you can play a very fun uh, game in, in, in a lot of systems, I would recommend, other than 5e, probably. Yeah. Um, uh, if you want something that's really focused on, like, you know, a super uh, tactical, realistic combat sim, uh, which I've mentioned in the past, probably, is like, you know, go to 3.5, go to Pathfinder, play Heroes, something, you know. Right. Crunchy. Um, Real yeah, crunchy. Yeah, a little crunchy. A little, yeah, that's, yeah, got more. Not that D&D &D doesn't have a ton on combat rules. It's still 90% of what's in, in any of the books. But, right. Um, the, uh, but I do, I, I think, yeah, if you if you can find some sort of timed element that matters or, or there's an objective for the people who are uh, engaged with your party uh, that they're trying to complete other than just dropping the party to zero hit points or, or you know, cap, you know, maybe, Maybe they need to capture one person. Maybe they need to get a piece of uh, something, you know, some MacGuffin that the party just picked up, and then they leave, and it doesn't matter right. how many people die along the way. They've got to get those that one thing, and then they're going to flee, and they have some sort of, you know, so if they get it, they, they're gone. Like, you know, yeah. keeping things exciting uh, is, I guess, what you want to uh, try and do, and that's less of a... A pitfall than than a, than a thing to do right but, so go but no yeah it's like it's, it's like often when we talk about things that uh, are bad we end up talking about things that we wish happened or are, are good 
Um, also, I think that another thing that could make combat bad is, uh, you know, a few things that we haven't, you guys haven't talked about, like uh, NPCs being overpowered, you know, taking, um, yeah. like, you know, NPCs that are in the combat with your player characters as, like, helpful NPCs that are way better than the player characters. I see a lot of, like, on our tabletop horror stories about DMs who are like, and here is the NPC who's like the DM NPC, and all the monsters that you're going to face have advantage against your attacks, but, you know, they're weak against his, you know? And uh, that's, yeah. that's something that can make combat feel really like a token, token, you know, where it's just like, oh, you're, you're just here to watch the DM masturbate. If it's, basically. yeah, exactly. <laughs> when you, yeah, when you turn it into a, a, like a, a cinematic kind mm -hmm. of, you know, when it feels like it's almost a cut scene in a Call of Duty game, uh, where basically you just, oh, hit A, all right. right. And, you know, you know, it's like, uh, you know, if that's, <coughs> you, you definitely want to avoid, um, putting your players in a position where, yeah, they feel like their input doesn't matter one way or the other. Right. If it's, you know, it's not threatening enough <laughs> that they feel right. like it has any uh, input on, uh, or, you know, if that, that they don't feel like they are they have any skin in the game because right. there isn't a real cons uh, serious threat or, or on the other side of it is that, you know, they'll only succeed based on the terms the you know, that you've set down for yeah. them. Then, uh, then you, yeah, you end up boxing your uh, your players in a bit, which you, I, you know, as a general rule, I think you know we as DMs want to avoid. Or whatever. Yeah, I see um, sometimes too the like going along that line is like the DM has like the weapon that they need to use to defeat the boss, and it's like uh, the only strategy that they'll allow you to use is to use the glowy sword against the boss, and like then you win. And that's, yeah. you know, video it, games don't even yeah. do that anymore. You know, <laughs> like it's, you know, most games, like I, you know, it's, I say that then there's games like The Witcher where it's like, no, 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 no. You got to make sure your swords glow in the right way. To, right. Yeah, but, exactly. Um, but it's, but I, I, you know, there is usually more to it than just like, all right, this is the one. It's the Dragon Bane sort of, you know, scale bait right. slaying or something. You know, it's, you know, it'll, you got to mush it right back into the dragon's heart and he'll turn into stone again. Like, that's great for like a story or you know something like that but it it's maybe not as good for a party that's trying to live that out because right. there's really only the one outcome that they can ever get to um yeah. which i yeah it's longer down the line than than just combat i think there but but that's still yeah right just general pit dm yeah. pitfall thing so or, yeah well. like go well, combat i mean that is you did, i mean some and also i guess it's a really good point too combat that doesn't further plot can also be boring or or routine um i don't i haven't seen or be part of a lot of campaigns that are just like uh, the daily encounter you know uh right. but i right. have I, I can imagine that that would be a, a a boring thing to sit through would it be just like okay you're in the woods and three wolves attack you you know, because yeah, I, I rolled say, it on yeah, a table. This is a shot at me. Yeah. About the last <laughs> time. No. I, I think That's we a... run into that a lot too, though. Um, you know, playing online, you you don't you don't play eight nine hour games like you do right. in in person. Right. You know, and so you don't have time for that daily do combat. And I remember when I was you know when I was growing up and I was playing Hero a lot. Um, and and I assume this this case would be similar to somebody who's playing D and D for a extended period of time. But those combats were pretty commonplace, you know. Um, oh, yeah. I think because you got eight the hours. Random encounter, yeah. quote unquote. You know, right. the it's you know it it it's the quantum encounter. You know, you need mm -hmm. to go left or right. There's going to be something, but it'll be a random something. And right. however long you're traveling, there's going to be one encounter that you deal with over that whole thing, because you know any more would be tedious, even if it's right. a two week journey. And so yeah, sorry. And and any less yeah. you'd make too too far into the. Well, it's campaign. hard to fill a session, right? Uh, eight especially eight in those crunchier systems where the focus yeah. is so much more on combat and how your character is built mechanically. Um, so, if that's the kind of game you're playing, uh, where where you you know it's almost like a, a war game, mm -hmm. uh, tabletop tactical simulation si situation, then start looking at like how you can change the battlefield uh, in ways that are interesting. Look at like okay, well, there's you know like 
they've got to attack this keep or there's you know a guard tower somewhere that's uh being threatened that they need to defend or they're you know let's uh find a way to get that that 25 by 25 flat grid that you have to be something more exciting and interesting right. so it's not um, final final destination on right. exactly. Brothers. yeah you got you yeah you got just people okay well i uh you know i do my down b smash going and, you know. <laughs> going along with that too is is something that i think a lot of dms don't uh consider but that dm kind of the their D D and a lot of other systems kind of ask you to take mind is enemy tactics because you know like a pack of wolves is not going to fight like a group of bandits and a group of bandits is not going to fight like a group of soldiers but right. a lot of the times you do see dms are just like the enemies just run forward pick the target and then they surround and just smack them you know like it's just even in every enemy runs that way you know there isn't any uh, attempt to differentiate enemies by their tactics that they use right it's like yeah or if like you know maybe that's a reasonable solution for a pack of wolves or something right. but like your you know yeah like your bandits i mean they're gonna fig they're gonna target the soft target and then they're gonna move on to you know like they're not gonna sit there and swing at the big right you know plate me wearing dude necessarily uh like in you know they might do something to try and take them out of the fight you know because they see right. them as the biggest threat or if there's a caster they might go after somebody who looks like a spellcaster because they're like oh crap you know yeah, kill they kill the squishy throw fireballs yeah. that's bad like <laughs> another you know. thing along the same same line of thought um you know you have all these these stat blocks for these basic people you know call them bandits whatever you know right. very basic you know nothing huge on them um one of them could have a, a bag of, of ball bearings, you know, uh, one right. of them might have a healing potion, you know, think about the things they're carrying and the, in, in their tactics yeah. on that level uh, that yeah. they can use and employ against the party to hinder those that, you know, otherwise might not get hit by their little short sword or whatever. Right. On, on that kind of same or similar note, I, uh, something I like to do a lot is I will throw, um, even in just sort of innocuous random, roadside bandit type encounters i'll i'll throw a you know like legendary actions or a legendary resistance Ooh. or or you know one of these like initiative based actions to represent like a, a squad of people waiting to ambush with arrows or uh you know you can do some of these things that are built for much higher level cr uh, encounters like because realistically if they're fighting bandits still it's probably a lower level campaign right. yet you're in tier one tier two most likely uh but but that's where most of the play happens so mm -hmm. you can get use out of some of these cooler features like legendary actions before they're fighting the big bad evil guy at the end um which uh, realistically a lot of campaigns don't see you know you don't you don't always make it that far sometimes you only get a couple random encounters and they're still great campaigns and it just right. stuff happens and you know yeah, life circumstances change in a way that makes it really hard to continue to meet or something, and then you uh, have to, you know, stop a campaign. So it's uh, you you want to make every combat individually valuable. Right. There are you don't I don't yeah the random encounters things like that. That's you don't want filler where yeah. it's just like oh well I needed to get this session stacked because I didn't have anything prepped, so I slapped a couple of these guys in here and hoped for the best here um because i wanted yeah. yeah it was good i knew i'd eat up an hour and a half or something it's like you don't want to yeah. you don't want to resort to that with combat especially dude. with 5e yes. this yeah, is just not really built for combat it's it can be fun you know the spells yeah. and the different things you can do they can be interesting but it's not like you know i've, I've played i've played games that are crunchy and that you have multiple options and and builds and things you can do that employ in combat that are really interesting I use not not that system. It's, I use built right. for role play. It's not that you can't. You can. It can be done. It takes much more imagination and legwork to uh, and do to pull off success. Employment of the rule of cool, I think, because it's really following kind of the 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 laws of how five E is, you know, very fluid and meant to be role play heavy. Right. Put that into your combat too. Give right. give exactly. some throw throw the players a bone if they have a cool idea in combat and it's not really explained mechanically, um, and come up with something on the fly that seems to work. Then 
if it sucked or it was too powerful or not powerful enough to yeah. talk to the player afterward and sort that out. But I think, yeah, with combat, you have to get a little little creative. Yes. Otherwise, you run into the problems that we've been pointing out. Uh, so I, I suppose we, moving on here, um, we we're kind of talking about solutions to some of these problems, but we should really like make that a, a focus here. So in terms of like combat that is um, uh, too boring or repetitive, uh, a a good solution is like what what you guys have been saying, like put ball bearings in a bandit's pocket, or you know give the bandit leader a lair action in his bandit hideout. Uh, I've actually seen someone who made a a war action table where it was like you're fighting someone in a in a combat zone, and so the 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 actions are kind of like rare actions, but yeah, but it's like a a cluster of arrows peppers the battlefield, and so you everyone on the battlefield has to make a dexterity save or be hit with a couple of arrows, and that includes right. the bandits on the field, you know, because it's like a like a war. You know, there's there's things happening around right. the the combat encounter that makes it a little bit more interesting than just you fighting five bandits, you know, um, or five soldiers or something like that. So I think those are good ideas. Something that I've uh, been doing is naming my all of the the bandits or NPCs in any 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 way because it allows me to give them a little bit more character. You know, and it, they're they're always terrible names like Steve oh, and Kyle and Chris no. and Chad. It's like Dragon no. Hill. There were five teams, it? and every like one of them boats. started with a letter. So it was like yep. there was the team where everybody's name started with an D, a. and a, yeah, <laughs> oh A B gosh, C D like, E. Well, yeah. there was I you there was a whole like you know votes every year, yeah, or man. like you know oh, like yeah, a, a, a talk you know and right. spends time with his grandmother yep. and like you know I, these I just named like, bandits after. <laughs> positive <laughs> qualities yeah just yeah, random and, like yeah. wholesome acts yep. and it was just like they oh, were still bandits but, remember that. but this yeah, bandit like, has ouch. like a flower garden my soul. You know? yeah. yeah exactly like oh my god so goodness. that's that's a fun way to really easily add a little bit of flavor is if you name your enemies stuff that is like get a get a chuckle out of your your players you know because it, it takes no time to name a bandit chad but you know, right. oh man, your players will make use <laughs> That's of That's a silly the, name yeah, in a medieval like, setting, so yeah, it's kind exactly. of funny. You know, like, and, like it's great, like having two bandits like Chad, Kyle, and Thaddeus, and you're just like, Okay, well now I have like like Thaddeus is afraid, you know, and so like in combat he's gonna just like duck behind people and that kind of thing. And it allows you to give them a little bit more character than just bandit one bandit two bandit three you know you can actually like yeah really and the, and the goal is too. more than just okay i want to drop each of these three to zero hit points right it becomes an interaction with three people like, yeah people, you yeah know, exactly that are, that are on you know that are you know whatever positioned hostile yep. but like uh they're not but yeah, yeah, they're still like beings rather yeah, than just like faceless, faceless targets yeah. that pop up so, to get knocked down, kind of. Exactly, exactly. And so I think that that's a that's something that I've found success in. That's it's really quick. Is just naming your your people goofy ass stuff because then you'll get reactions from your role players and you'll find yourself role playing the enemies a little bit more carefully. Um. So I guess another thing that I'd like to talk about too is something we kind of touched on in terms of like pitfalls in that like I didn't have enough time to set up this session so I'm just going to throw you know two two bugbears at them um is prepping for combat sessions. Right. And it's I think that that combat is in in the way that I DM I prep for combat sessions way more than role play sessions cuz role play sessions I like I don't need to know everything that the people are going to say. You know, I'm pretty good at acting and, and ad-libbing, and so it's I can just get into a character and go. But with combat sessions, man, if I don't have, like, a well-drawn battle map you know, that, that I'm running and, like, uh, enemies that are, like, you know, stat-blocked out and I have put, like, a, a tactics in the description, I feel a little bit naked. Um, but... You know, and that's so 
I've found that prepping for combat sessions helps the success level of the of my own combat sessions. You know, I've actually I actually have the exact opposite. Oh, interesting. I have to I have to I have to prep a lot more for RP. Uh, I think simply because I'm not as good at ad libbing and 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 just on the fly character concept creation. Mm-hmm. Um, but in combat, I, I I I'm typically pretty good at describing how things flow, where people are, what they're doing, and and to be honest with you, I don't really prep combat at all. I don't really use stat blocks unless it's somebody really really important or something that I've drawn up specifically for this this combat. Um, but if it's if it's an interaction with some bandits, I I will just give them an HP amount that seems decent for the the, the you know what they are um, mm-hmm. you know eleven for a, for a, for a bandit or something between between nine and eleven um, a D eight sword they're probably got a, a thirteen strength and a fourteen dex maybe mm-hmm. um, you know and sort of just note that stuff down right as the combat begins. And then it's it's more about how are you going to interact with these people during the combat, and how are they going to interact based on what's happening during the combat? Um, are they you know? And it turns more into an RP encounter, okay, with some dice on it, you know, right. for, for okay. damage and stuff. Um, and then and a lot of it's just describing like what they're doing, what, mm-hmm. how they move, what type of, of of flourish they do with their scimitar before they hit you and. That's you something know, that you're really good at, actually. I've 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 noticed is like you're one of the in in having you as a player even is you're one of the best players to be like how do you want to do this and it'd be more than I stab him through the neck, you know. <laughs> it's you you put a little bit of flourish into it. Well, thank you. Oh, that's that's, the, that's, I, that's what I I pride myself on that because it's something that I don't think a lot of DMs do that really can add a lot of a lot of flavor to their combat. Yeah. Is is put filling those spots between I move to the guy and I hit him with my sword. So I have an that. interesting uh, um, exercise that I think has has I've done a few times and has helped me a lot. So uh, it's called uh, uh, sticks and stones. And imagine that you're a DM and you're conf- conducting a fight scene against Con- a con- conducting <laughs> yes conducting a fight scene against a, a demon. With, and the demon has 20 health remaining. You, uh, so you have another person who is like the, the person that's doing the combat. And they roll a d20 to determine what kind of attack. And then they roll another d20 to determine the damage, how much damage they do. So a 20 would be you kill the demon, anything less, and you just wound him. So you got like 20, you have dagger, short sword, broadsword, bow and arrow, and that kind of thing. When you... Uh, the first time you, you the person rolls, the, the player then writes down five words that the DM cannot use to describe the attack. And then the DM must describe the attack without those five words. The next roll, there's another five words that can't be used to describe the attack. And so now you have ten words you can't use to describe the attack. And eventually, after about four or five rounds, you wind up with like, okay, how do I describe me hitting this demon with a, a morning star? Without using the words like swing or arc or oh. weapon or Bonk. or crush Thunk. or yeah, it's a, well you'll it, see. like the player starts being I like okay you. he's used <laughs> I got all swing day. a couple of times <laughs> you swimble so, to the side. Doctor Seuss, I ended up going yeah. you you like you like uh, 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 sway your your killing end. Into his ouchy spot. And it's just like, it's like, ha! Ah, they did it! Nailed um, it. <laughs> but yeah, so it, it really does show you that sometimes you do overuse words in descript- describing Absolutely. combat, you know, Absolutely. that that you should try. Because there's many, like what you're saying, there's many synonyms for oh, like yeah, something like. Did outlaw bonk i would have to think (laughs) they should do this stuff with like country music right yeah exactly (laughs) oh (laughs) i get it no they don't i was like what do what (laughs) outlaw an acoustic guitar (laughs) yeah outlaw (laughs) (laughs) you must describe your heartbreak but you can't use sad blues yeah (laughs) (laughs) Uh, cannot discuss dog 
Um, uh, but yeah, so can't it's use just... the word blue jeans. <laughs> use... Oh God, Is that one word. I don't know. I think so. Is it hyphenated? <laughs> But that's that is something that I think that DMs can work on is using your descriptive voice not only in scenes but in combat because that does and it sometimes can be a little clunky I guess because you do have to be like okay what's the AC and then you then describe it you know it's not like RP where it's all just in the in the, the stuff it's more like you have to come out and then come back in and come out and come back in to run the the encounter with the rules while still providing you know the aspect of a role-playing encounter right. you know um i still be playing D &D or right still be playing whatever you, you you can't get rid of too many of the yeah. rules otherwise you, it stops you, being what you said down right or sit down and nor do you want to just stop rping and just focus on the rules because then you're just playing a board game you know yeah. and it's just roll dice against the other person until the other person or you falls over and so there is a you know, a middle ground there. I think that 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 HDM should strive to to hit, I suppose. Um, so yeah, and then I, I suppose too, I uh, was talking about like objectives in combat and both player objectives and enemy objectives, because I think that too many DMs also deterrent like say that combat is over when the enemy side is all dead, where you know, a group of bandits, if even one goes down, they might flee, you know, because they're not, they, you know, one bandit dead, not worth it, you know, so they that's might thing, run into the forest. That's thing I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I do too much. Oh, I, like, so... I put myself in that, in that, in that, like, that bandit group's, like, mind for a minute, and I look at it, and I'm like, well, these, these motherfuckers, they're not going to fight to the death over this, you know? They, they've seen a couple of their dudes die pretty gruesomely and cry out and, <laughs> sure and whatever yeah. and uh yeah now now um maybe it's not worth the 25 gold that they're trying to rob from the party um to stick around and possibly just get disemboweled um, i i agree with that to to an extent i guess sorry if you weren't done but but it does it does it does impose some new challenges for combat um because all your encounters are now a lot easier um and and admit admittedly that's that's a that's a problem i run into a lot um is i you know if if you try to put together an encounter that's going to make sense and then you're going to disperse it after a few of them die right it's be 10 times as strong basically yeah right you gotta make it stronger and then you then you kill and then your, it like, stops making it. sense that they'd flee after one person drops and <laughs> right. so on down, you know now the encounter is too hard yeah and i think so yeah, sorry. You should keep in mind that as the DM, you can determine the goals of that that bandit group. So maybe they're not trying to steal the twenty three gold for you know to go it's buy two gold somewhere. Yeah, twenty five. Yeah, I flipped it into my back pocket. That's yeah, probably the bandits. <laughs> it's probably the bandits. Not... But yeah, you you they're not stealing the gold for like selfish purposes. They're trying to steal the gold to like buy the medicine to cure their like beloved yeah, matron or something you know yeah, they they move will somewhere fight full to the of sick people they're yeah. actually just you know trying to do this thing that's yeah. really not a bad deal and like i you know that's i think that's one way to change the dynamic of combat but the thing i was going to bring up or during that is uh i do think that part of that whole they wouldn't fight to the death thing comes from a weird uh, view or or sort of a, a view of hit points that I don't think sticks super well with 5e anymore um, in that that they're kind of like meat points and that right. you know like a barbarian can get hit with a great sword like 12 times before he dies or something and just you know take it to the chest until <laughs> he falls out like that that's somehow how that works um, and, and I think that it's uh, sort of more, more of now like a meta version of measuring the sort of flow and tide of combat right. and sort of uh um you know yeah like a lot of things i i, I say a lot is like yeah you're you, you don't really draw blood until they're bloodied which is half health um and and you know yeah that's where to me i look at it and it's like yeah if somebody gets hit and they don't die outright from one hit uh, to the point where they're below half health, you've probably actually done something that's drawn blood. But otherwise, 
um they're it's really probably just the flow of combat right. and like oh you were able to get a couple strong uh swings off that they didn't parry as effectively and that they're now on the back foot for when you actually do strike so that's not to say that like yeah it's like every time you roll below their ac you miss every time you roll above you get a clean strike on right. flesh yeah, it's right. sort of that's a good more point. mutable but but that's very hard to remember when you come from a system like 3.5 or 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 more you know crunchy uh systems where it literally just is is a physical representation yeah. of like how much body you know you've got left or whatever yeah um well and i feel like the systems that that handle that best are the ones where hp doesn't go up every level because it doesn't make any sense that your level you 10 don't. barbarian has more arms to cut, cut off right than a level three barbarian <laughs> you know um, yeah it's just harder to get at it or you right. know he's you know able to, to mitigate hit. more of the swing from somebody because of whatever set of circumstance, you know, be it a bunch of thick armor around him or he's really agile or whatever. But yeah, that's, of, uh, yeah. That's sort of what I did um, when, and Eric knows about this because he was there, but uh, I was running a, like a wild west game, which I don't suggest yeah, you do. I was there too. Um, oh, you were there too. Yeah, I remember that. Um, but it, I don't suggest running 5e in a bunch of different settings like that, that are just not, fantasy settings but that's beside the point and for another video um the uh hp i represented as like luck um you know sort of as as it goes down your luck is running out um right. you know and 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 when you hit zero is when you're shot because i mean guns you can't right i remember one <laughs> combat they were in where they peppered the sheriff of the town oh my with god like 25 bullets he to take him down and i walk over and like oh shot god. him once or something yeah. with an axe and it was like oh yeah there now he's now actually he's dead. did the damage of like six people's <laughs> shooting turns because and and that's the problem is it's just really hard to reflect stuff like firearms in a system like right. D that's built around medieval technology that mm -hmm. doesn't include that it's it, it doesn't measure up there's a reason that we don't walk around with bows and arrows and swords and stuff right anymore. guns do more damage same, <laughs> yeah department but yeah so i mean that's just yeah that's that's uh um, the the idea that you know like the hp doesn't actually dictate how much blood is left in the body i think is something that you can even play around with depending on the encounter itself because something like a red dragon it's going to make a little bit more sense that you can really like swing Jack a sword it. deal 12 oh, damage yeah. and it just be a little nick on its foot you know sure where but you know, the, you know but when you get up to the like 500 hit points right it's it's even then becomes like okay you've been standing on his neck and you doubt like what would have chopped right. like 18 people in half <laughs> yeah. or something you know what i mean like yeah it's like just by mass you should be through by now but you can't be because that's yeah. not how this is you know in heroes so you can is, hand wave a lot of that just right yes, you yeah know, you, you just you're on that's, the back of it just hacking into it mm -hmm. um it doesn't have to like oh now you're Two Five people through, through yeah, you're chopping, <laughs> yeah, you're chopping down a tree, and it, it is you know you've made this amount of progress or something. Yeah. But but that's yeah, I think that's part of it is that it's yeah, it doesn't all translate directly into like yeah, blood spilled necessarily. Right. Each damn it, each point of health lost. Um. But uh, but that's I as a DM, I forget that when I'm running games. Yeah, me too. You know, it's not it. I say that it's easy to say from here when I'm not in the middle of a session thinking about it and describing the first. Oh, okay, you hit him because you got over an 18, and it's just faster and simpler to say that it was a successful attack. Right. And like you know, that the whole process takes like way more verbiage. And yeah. Why not? Yeah, absolutely. And it just has to. You have to remind yourself, you know, that it's not the case, especially like as we. In video games, like, that is how HP is, oh, yeah. like, shown. You know, like, you hit a dude, he loses 30 health, and his character mm -hmm. stays the same, and he just has a little red bar that's 30 health less, you know, like. Yeah. So it's hard for us as DMs to remind ourselves that HP doesn't have to be, doesn't have to work like that. It is, like what I think Brett says in, in 5e, much more a like a way or maybe that was you but it much more of a way of like determining the flow of combat or like where one side is over the other side in terms of like 
are they getting the upper hand in combat or not, rather than, oh, they've done 45 more points of damage than these people, and so there are 45 more points of blood, like, on the floor than the other side. You know, that's just, it's a, a mistake, I think, to look at HP in, in that kind of a simplistic viewpoint, because there's a lot more interesting ways that you can use it. Yeah, and then there's there's a thing that's done in the uh, Saga Edition, the Star Wars role-playing game Saga Edition mm. or something like that. It was sort of a precursor to uh, 5e, 4th Edition, 5e. I can't remember. It came out right before one of them. I think it was before 4th Edition because I want to say Perkins worked on it. Anyway, uh, <laughs> they have a condition track uh, that, like, basically you have a threshold uh, that if a single attack deals more than that amount of damage, um, it's basically kind of like your uh, constitution save num like a, a or a, a constitution defense or something. Mm -hmm. You know that kind of an idea. It's an AC based on your your con mod, and uh, then you if they beat that number, then you uh, go down this track, uh, which the first step's like a minus one on like you know attacks and skill checks mm -hmm. and then you go to minus two and five steps you're unconscious and it like it's kind of like the exhaustion track it just gets progressively worse as you go right um and that's a really good it's a system with guns that's very similar to uh you know 5e basically it, it works uh, in a lot the same way uh with way more it's actually if you want to if you want to play some sort of cowboy or or futuristic version of 5e i recommend star wars saga edition okay it's a good one but uh i think it's basically not printed anymore it was like a pre disney star wars product i think but um uh i could be you wrong probably find it online though if you're curious yeah, and, you know, wherever people look for things. Like right, that. yeah. <laughs> totally you know, legal places. I'm yes, sure. you didn't hear uh, that from us, but yes, go go search in the totally legal places for that unprinted... You didn't hear that from us. Go to right. the legal places. Go to the legal places. <laughs> it's not right. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so so uh, kind of going along with, with that, other systems combat and how they kind of go about solving some of the problems we brought up because like in hero system, uh, your your HP is represented as your body, and that actually goes in like classes. And so if you have more than ten body, it is like how big you are. So someone who is like five foot three and a ninety pounds is going to have like four body, whereas someone who's like six foot eight and three hundred pounds is going to have like ten body. And so it really is like if you have more hp you're just a bigger thing and so you can take more wax with a with a, a tool or a weapon the downside the is it become easier to hit and stuff too is yeah. you know the larger it is the more body it has the more right. damage it can take physically because it's larger just it's bigger more stuff. massive yeah it's to be more stuff yeah, messed with yeah so um, it's harder to deal lots of damage to a big thing and so it's, that's how it mitigates that that problem that D&D &D has with HP. But that system is just a, a mess. It's a mess right. of all sorts of, you know, there's, there's, it's more than just a, that's, you know, there's, there's stun and there's all, you know, yep. defenses. And, that's, mm -hmm. yeah, I was going to say. You yeah. know, it's more complicated than just, you have yeah. four of these things, you know. And then the other side. And speed. And, you have like something uh, of Monster of the Week where they're just like, HP now. You have, you have. You get hit, what, twice? Yeah, fixed or, number yeah. of uh, wounds. Yeah, of exactly. Thing, Everyone basically. can get hit four times, and that's that's it. You get hit four times, you're dead. I actually, I actually it's, very much love that. I, love I thought that. it was kind of, right. it's all right. Like, I don't hate it. It's just super simple. And yes. like, but that it does away with a lot of these conflicts right. that are like, well, you know, but I'm wearing this armor, mm -hmm. blah, 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 or what, you know, like, blah, blah, Because we're all made of the same stuff, you know? <laughs> Right. And at the end of the day, you know, someone who's 100 pounds heavier than someone else, you know, a truck hitting them is going to do basically the same thing, you know. Or a gunshot. Or a gunshot. You know, sword, you know if you're not yeah, just exactly. hacking away, like, like, flanks of meat <laughs> on their legs or something. And butchering like, them for food. Right. 
it's gonna do basically the same thing and like so, proportion yeah. it i guess is what it comes to but right. yeah that's the thing is that yeah i guess it's the same so that's how yeah. you all scale that stuff it's all like a weird slushy system and there's yeah. going to be compromises that uh in any pretty much system, every system yeah, has to make gonna because be some kind of compromise yeah exactly. actually not a reality simulation it's a you know a game that's been game. made for the <laughs> yeah. sake of you know expediency and practicality right. at the table even if it's heroes they were they made some decisions because they were like no nah, look like let's just <laughs> chill out on the calculus there <laughs> not everywhere just there <laughs> right we don't have to have them solve for an arc to determine where the arrow goes, you know, like, <laughs> all right, hey, how I many force are you using eight to draw sessions back to get filled up nice and Yeah, quickly. exactly, they determining sure, the yeah. physics of your, your arrow velocity, yes, it's, it's something that... It, it does devolve into that with the more complicated systems a lot. Yeah, which like, is what you gotta look out for. We used to right. call it 3D and D. Is, uh, <laughs> whenever you get involved in trying to measure, like you know, it's like, oh, Pythagorean's theorem. No, we need to stop this argument right now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, I don't, it's over. We're taking a shortcut, and we're just gonna say yes or no to something here because the the, the cross bar on a triangle equals the same as the height. Okay, like, if you're... like leave me alone. <laughs> no, I'm done. Like, how big would the sphere really be if it's a square hallway? <laughs> Couldn't I just crouch into the corner, like? Oh, no <laughs> yeah right yeah so that that kind of thing can happen the cruncher systems and so like and that's the thing as a dm pro tip use a cylinder <laughs> much easier to describe yeah. um, well it's you know you can make it bigger and fill the hallway right precisely. without yeah without yeah, it doesn't yeah. it's just a steamroller Cracks, yeah. <laughs> never again won't have to deal with that argument ever again, ever again. Um, but no, yeah, I think that, that as a DM, though, you can determine, like, the level of complexity you want in your combat by the system that you're using. You know, if you want combat that is really streamlined and it goes by quick, do something like Monster of the Week, where you have, like, everyone is reasonably the same and combat is more of a description exercise than an actual, like, dice versus dice kind of deal. If you're looking for something that's more of a physics simulator where, you know, you are are trying to take into account things as esoteric as gravity and the rotation of the body that you're standing on, then there are some systems that, that will scratch that itch. 5e, I think, definitely falls kind of in the middle of these two things. And it's that, like, there is a lot of complexity in the combat rules, as Mystery pointed out, 90% of the, the book and what they talk about is based in the combat 60 percent of that is based on magic users though so right yeah exactly <laughs> yeah right pretty simple system <laughs> um but and so and i've had i've been able to to run pretty interesting combat encounters in 5e and uh, you know so it's not impossible to have really in-depth combat it just does take a little bit more creativity in in terms of like the rules will not help you make this the combat deeper in fact i think kind of five, how 5e's rules work out is it does tend to lend itself to uh your turn would you roll 17 that's a miss your turn would you roll 18 you hit damage 12 okay oh yeah yep and so you, you know like it's just it's really easy to evolve in that and especially if the combat has been running long you know, if if you're two and a half hours into the combat session and the oh, yeah. fucking mages, Which, especially yeah, yeah once sometimes. you reach that point, mm -hmm. where nobody's nobody's really having fun anymore. That's really where what where you get. Yeah, you know? Ivy, e, I find it's like the system is more fun when used to avoid conflict or as a you know conflict avoidance is first. Like basically, you're going your party's going through trying to figure out how and in what ways they can circumvent the sort of issue uh that they're dealing with threat you know like i mean that that actual um like fight or threat or right. whatever like some some way that they can get around it i guess right lost my train of thought but yes um that is this is all very things that i think will has at least helped me in terms of making combat a little bit more interesting um and uh and conflict a little bit more interesting 
speaking of conflicts, uh, yeah. we yeah we did want to take a little bit of this program to uh, turn our eye to what is happening in the world. Um, there has been you know some some pretty uh, heavy amounts of unrest, and we just want to make sure our users are informed and as well as safe and and you know uh, prepared, I suppose. Yeah, just everybody out there, be careful. There's some really fucked up shit that you can see just by, you know, getting a quick YouTube search. Um, and it's, you know, in increasing amount of militarization does not seem to be a thing that will lead to less of those kinds of conflicts. Um, to that end, uh, with the stuff, there are a lot of petitions out there. Um, on you know change.org and places like that uh that you can um you know that you can show some small uh amount of support without uh going out and putting yourself in harm's way if that's something that you're not able or comfortable doing uh you know doing um mm -hmm. and uh there's some links i'll be throwing in the chat over the uh break here uh, there's online protests that are being held at the, uh, uh, Bernice King, um, online tomorrow at like 6 PM CST. I think I'll have a, you know, a link for that. There's a bunch of, uh, uh, bail fund programs, the national bail fund network, the bail project, Act blue, uh, all these localized bail fund, uh, groups that are working to help people who are, uh, kind of, you know, the victims of a lot of this awful police action stuff that's happening here and, and people who can't afford uh, bail for that or, you know, help in communities where uh, sort of poverty is, uh, you know, one of the things that they're victimized by. Um, uh, and yeah, and I guess if you're like an average everyday person, just um, think about it. That I guess yeah. that's all we can ask. Be informed. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. one of the one of the big things I think is, you know, over the years and being somebody who's not real close to that and doesn't see that on a regular basis, you sort of get insensitized to it or it desensitized to it. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> um, you know, and sort of open opening your eyes to it, reading some articles, watching videos educating yourself on it um you can you can certainly you know get another perspective you know and yeah. keeping your mind open and looking at it from another another perspective it, you know if if you're one of the people that who's just sitting by and not doing anything because order over unrest and all of that there are things you can do to help you know that don't require you standing on the front lines or yeah. No one is powerless. Everyone can incite at least a little bit of positive change in their communities and in the world at large. And so it's kind of a responsibility as citizens of the world to try to do that. And so if you do think that something is going wrong, we urge you to take steps to Which do something. Shit's yes. going wrong. Like if you look around and you see, stuff, yeah, do what you can when you see what's right. wrong. Yeah. I guess, yeah. Some, make, make some measurable effort right. that you're right. able to. So we're gonna forego our own plugs and stuff tonight. We're gonna put yeah. these these in the in the chat here. I get those we'll post them in our Discord there. server. Um, hop in our Discord server and and hang out in our community. There's a there's a discussion going on there about it all. Yep. Um, but that's that's the only plug I'm doing. I promise. Um, we're gonna take a break. When we get back, we're going to give away a gift sub to somebody in the audience. So if you're if you're here, stick around, wait around, and we will do the thing. Woohoo! We'll see you in like ten minutes. Bye, everybody. And we're back. Hi, everybody. We're back. Welcome back. We are back. Table 13. Congratulations to Thunder Wand for winning the gift sub. Woohoo! As soon as I hit all the buttons in the proper procedure. Thanks for order. checking us out. Thanks for stopping in. Thanks for the follow. I believe you joined the Discord, actually. Yes. Which is pretty great. Even better. Dun, dun, this is the first time I've actually ever done this, so I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, it's done. It did a thing. Woohoo!
We did Congrats. it. Blink. Yes, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thanks for stopping by. Um, now, uh, where were we? Oh, I actually had a thing I've been sitting on and waiting yes. for the, the conversation to um, sort of, of move toward. Um, that actually it has to do with combats and, and, and sort of how to make them mm -hmm. uh, interesting. And I don't know mm -hmm. if either of you have ever done this, but I think it's something that that you can employ it and, and, and realistically makes kind of decent sense. A three-party fight okay. where you have the players, you have the enemies, and then you have like a neutral third party that's sort of like volatile, whether they're on your side or not, that you're competing against, you know, to complete the mission. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually did this in one of my games. Um, it was a one-shot or something, and they had to come re go retrieve a MacGuffin from some cultists or something. And, and they were told as they walked into it that there was another party that was interested that had left just before them. Um, and when they got there, it was them and then this, this mercenary party and then the cultists. And there was sort of this very strange who's on whose side kind of encounter that I think was really interesting and, and, and more difficult, not because of bigger numbers, but because there was a third party that was not really an ally. Right. And you can, like, force allies through the combat. You know, like, if, if you both land a hit on the same enemy, you know, in that third group, you might, like, join up for a little bit to fight yeah, back this enemy. to drop that guy or something. Then. But then they might become the enemy later when it right. comes, you know, to light that you're after the same thing they are or, you know, or whatever. Right. Or, or yeah, or that's a basis for them to try not to, uh, you know, interact hostile, in a hostile manner. They're like, oh, no, we're both mm -hmm. an enemy on enemy situation. Um, I think, yeah, you can find ways that's, yeah, sort of the... Uh, the tavern brawl type situations uh, where it's, you know, sort of, yeah, just a, a bunch of people who maybe are all with, you know, fighting with each other or whatever, you know, in a group in a, in a tavern or something like that. Then you, it's as a DM, you can also manage that conflict uh, sort of incrementally, like how tough it is. You can add people in or take people away. And uh, yeah, if you have like another faction for, the the main threat to be targeting then you can sort of yeah like oh shit they got a couple solid hits in on the pcs this turn i need to mm -hmm. like direct attention elsewhere or vice versa it's too easy you can turn the other faction against the parties a little more aggressively or something like that yeah. so I, I i think that's another really great tool to try and use to uh uh keep keep combat sort of flexible um and interesting yeah like you can um yeah, you know, lay the stakes on, make it intense, and get investment involved uh, mm -hmm. without uh, without worrying as much about whether or not you're just going to murder your party. Right, right, and 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 it's not something to employ every fight, but it is something to certainly that you can utilize um, to keep in your 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 utility belt, if mm -hmm. you will. Um, is a little bit of a more complicated encounter that way. You could also do the same thing on the opposing side. You know, there's two opposing teams that are trying to get something from you or something right. and, and you know and they're also fighting each other or introduce animals into a fight between yeah. two different parties that are you know, humanoids yeah. or whatever that's what i was thinking like a bandit encounter where a wolf pack attacks the battle you know where the the wolf pack is now fighting both the bandits and your party and so you and the bandits might have to team up to fight the wolf pack for a little bit and then oh hey look now the wolf pack's dead are you friends now do you keep killing each other you know, you just saved me from that wolf, but now we're gonna fight to the death. That seems but weird. You still want my money, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, so that is that is a good way to add complexity to the combat encounter. And, and I think it really boils down to: there's two parties that are involved in the fight, and then there's a third party, a third thing that you mm -hmm. include. You know, and sometimes that would be the environment being very difficult or right. strange. Sometimes that might be the the objective being different than just killing your enemy you know it's it's really like taking this you know 2d or battle and of, changing it into a 3d battle right yeah some sort of time element or it's you know yeah uh, kind of that sort of thing that you want to worry or that you're that you're stuck um I, I, yeah i guess i 
derail completely. But another point I was trying to bring up there uh, that I was going to try and find a nice way to wheel into was that the, uh, yeah, I think it, it, it does come back to a lot of, you don't want to use anything too often. Though. Right. Like in, in, even combat as a whole, I think if you uh, end up like with, you know, combat every session, unless that's the game that everybody was there for, uh, you're going to, it makes it less valuable each time you run into it and you get more of those sort of like, okay, I rolled an 18. Okay, cool. I hit, I do this damage. Sweet. Move on to the next one just to, uh, because it's efficient and it's the way you move through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's, yeah. I I think you, you keep it special. Um, and by, by switching up that third factor, uh, and you know, sometimes just leaving it out and like saying, yeah, no, you guys are just getting jumped this time. It's weird. You don't, yeah, it's not, you're not used to that kind of stuff. And you can let the players fill in the gaps on, like, yeah. you know, like, weird. What did we do to attract that direct kind of attention or something like that? Yeah. Right. And that's a really well, what good... Do you guys... No, yeah, go on. Sorry. What do you guys... And this is a total, like, just 180 switch. If you have something related, <laughs> go for it. No, no, no. I, I want to hear what okay. you have to say. So what do you, guys, what do you guys feel about, you know, every once in a while putting in a, a fight that's, like, just... They're going to wipe the floor with the enemies. Right. I feel like in some earlier campaigns I played and actually uh, citing Kyron's uh, mm-hmm. pirate campaign, there were a lot of fights we walked into that were literally just like, all right, go mow the yard. Right. You know, yeah. just just go, go kill everything. Um, and it was super easy. I think that those personal opinions on that are that they, it lets your players sort of flex how, you know, flex right. how powerful they are. Um and, and, and feel you know obviously the 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 um, uh, difficulty and the challenge is important so um, in these types of but there's like a uh, you've heard of like Tucker's uh, um, kobolds, kobolds right kobold Kob- kobolds kobolds Say kobolds it with me kobolds nope nope <laughs> you get it wrong. Um, incorrect. Uh, but yeah, so like where where they're incredibly difficult at at low levels. Well, there's there's the other version of that, and it was a, a meme that I saw where it's just like when your players are uh, have gotten new magical items, they want to test them out. The DM says that there's a, a small dead of a small den of kobolds, and uh, it's got a picture of the the Star Wars younglings, and they're just pictures of kobolds. <laughs> each one yeah exactly it just, yeah where you give the players like a dungeon or or a small encounter that is designed to make them feel powerful you know that's that's mm. a, a a good way of doing combat if they've been struggling or you know yeah that kind exactly. of thing exactly that is the ultimate aim of like a game really for most right. players is that they want to you know they're gonna you know role play as a a, a, a very powerful hero or whatever um so i you want to let them feel that sometimes right i think it's important that you do challenge them sometimes to to do that but i but yeah it's like um it's like with getting people who run away it's like yeah it makes the combat easier but the fact that it's more realistic right uh makes up for it so there are um it's not like it's just if it weren't hard we wouldn't care right for most parties i don't think um and uh but uh and so yeah i think it's yeah moderation and all the yeah. things with that basically is you, yeah. you gotta be you careful don't eat pizza for dinner every night right, right. <laughs> like otherwise your pizza doesn't really mean anything anymore. yeah exactly but i think that this is a good point and i think that that's a, a a good topic that we can end on here is that no matter like what you're doing in combat if you if you're doing it right even the most cliche things can be new and interesting um, you know, if, if you're, you know, you're, you're putting a lot of thought in your combat and you're making each one at least somewhat unique and you're putting a thought into it, you can get away with just dropping four bandits in the middle of a path on a party that's been through, you know, a lot of unique combat encounters and it being unique because just like what Mystery was saying, it doesn't have any crazy, goofy, like, like, or not even crazy or goofy, but it does. It's just straightforward, and they can be like, "That would be interesting to a party who isn't used to straightforward encounters." But if you're always just putting a thing in the path and having them fight four bandits, it's going to be Tuesday. You know, it's it's going to be normal, right? So, and, and that's I think really what you want to look for 
especially in combat and role playing, is that you want to make it worthwhile. Like it's kind of like dialogue and prose, where if you put it in, it's got to be for a reason. It's more realistic to like to like put down everything that someone has said in a situation. But if it's not important, it's not worthwhile in your story. And so same with like combat. If you're going to use combat, it's got to be for a purpose. There has to be something behind it more than just filling space or, you know, click, kick, uh, checking off the combat encounter for the day. You know, there has to be something that either furthers the plot, makes the characters bring about a certain like feeling, you know, like power or like, oh, this combat encounter is like the ver re reverse can be true. If you have a bunch of easy combat encounters in a row and then you throw something really hard in the party's way, they're going to sit up and pay attention. Um, and so it's, you know, it's that's the kind of thing is that you want to make your combat make the party sit up and pay attention. You know, at the end of the day, you want them to be like, hear the combat music and be like, oh, ooh. yeah. Instead Roll of like, oh, okay. and be like, oh, crap. Like, right. Yeah. Like, oh, man, we're on it now. Like, yep. that's, yeah, that's the goal. Definitely. Well, and to answer Thunder One's uh, question, absolutely not. That's a disgrace. Uh, and uh, what? It's, it's uh, no, pineapple and pizza. Are you mad? Are you insane? No. I just ate pineapple pizza tonight. You like, discussed it moments make ago. That, I feel like you just had a pizza with like tomato sauce and pineapple on it. It, okay. when you say pineapple pizza it worries no, me no 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 <laughs> the crust was pineapple okay <laughs> it's on a giant disc it's yes. like a bagel bite on bagel pineapple pizza, pizza. God. right well, i'm yeah. about that hang on <laughs> I'm wait a minute <laughs> i'm sorry this uh, this 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 is gross mm, yes i i'm yeah. a big fan of i i think yeah yeah that's another yeah, tip yeah, on yeah. how to make it's your combat more inciting Pineapple. Pineapple, pizza. Pineapple, on Pineapple pizza. combat. Yep. Make it interesting. <laughs> Make it inter yeah. The You're... next guard we meet in Eagle Hill will be eating, eating a pineapple. Eating just a pineapple. Straight just straight at my face. <laughs> yeah, we got this in. Imagine. Yeah. Oh, Imagine. No. No. The work that has oh. to go. Oh. God. That's people yeah. use like machetes and stuff. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> I don't know. He's like, you walk up and the town guard's just eating a coconut. It's just. Oh. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, oh, oh the sound. Mm -hmm. Yep. Nope. That's terrible. Yep. Nope. 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 Yep. Yep. Well, we're it's about that time, fellas. Yes. We're Very at that nice. midnight hour. The the night grows <sighs> dark. The witching hour approaches. Yep. I'm going. You know, we're reaching the, the part where the the pump the, the 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 thing turns into a pumpkin, and right. all the the glass shoes don't fit or something. Um. Everybody, thank you for watching. Um, we're gonna we're gonna uh, pop those uh, those links back in the description. Mm -hmm. Be careful. Be safe. Be informed. Be educated. Um, and be good. Do what you can um, to to help out. You know. Yeah. Uh, join our Discord. Come be our friends, and uh, we will see you again in a week. Stay safe, everybody. Talk to you later. Bye.